Welcome to the Smart Fit. Today we're making, in our opinion, the perfect bread for anything, focaccia. I'm not gonna lie. You're going to have to show this dough some love and be patient. You're gonna get in there and massage it, gently press and stretch, lubricate with some olive oil, and have patience because it takes up to 72 hours, but when it's done, it'll be perfect, just like in the movies. This focaccia is great by itself. We will be using our KitchenAid stand mixer. Look, everything in life comes down to two things, time or money. We spent the money to save time, but you can certainly spend the time doing this by hand, mixing everything in a large bowl and have great results. Ready? Let's make this. Start by measuring out 830 grams or 850 milliliters of filtered water because you deserve the best, but tap water works fine too. Warm your refreshingly filtered water to 38C or 100F. While that warms up, measure out 8 grams of yeast. Don't forget about your water. If it's too hot, you'll kill the yeast and then everyone will be sad, especially the dead yeast. Using your instant read thermometer, check the temperature. Got lucky on this one, came out just right. I think this focaccia is going to come out perfect. Create a mini vortex with your whisk and add the instant yeast. You could have just dumped the yeast without the vortex, but it looks cooler and it feels good to do so anyway. Let that sit for 5 to 10 minutes or until you see bubbles foaming, which means your yeast survived the vortex and are still alive and well. While the yeast continues to activate in the water, in the bowl of your stand mixer, measure 975 grams of bread flour. Okay, okay. Yeast alive, flour is measured, what's next? Attach your dough hook and lower it into the bowl. Turn it on to medium low speed, level two, and begin to slowly stream in your yeast water. Then turn it up to medium, level four. If you're looking for the detailed recipe, the link is in the description below for imperial and metric unit. When you have the remaining 100 milliliters, you need to drizzle it in little by little, slow down back to medium low again, or else you're gonna splash all over the place but then again, you're going to do whatever you want, so have some fun. Set a timer for 10 minutes and let it mix on medium speed for a set amount of time. Meanwhile, you can do what you want. Indulge in an adult beverage, work out, call your loved one, follow us on Instagram at the Smart Fit Recipes. You know, all great options. After about 10 minutes, put your phone down and scrape down the sides of the bowl and add 20 grams of sea salt. Set the timer for another 10 minutes and keep on going, doing whatever you were doing before, and join our Facebook page at The Smart Fit. While that's mixing, measure 30 grams or 3 tablespoons of olive oil and drizzle that into the focaccia dough. Let it continue to mix for 5 more minutes. I forgot to mention that I do recommend you sift your flour into the bowl in order to result in a smoother dough. Now we have some work to do by hand and create longer strands of gluten. I like this method where you reach down along the side of the bowl, scoop some dough and stretch it to the point right before it tears and then repeat this for two minutes. Cover your wet dough and let it rest at room temperature for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes, uncover it and you can see it's already active and producing gas. And just check out those little beautiful bubbles. Repeat the scoop and pull method as we did before. And I forgot to mention, you want to use wet hands when doing this because the hydration of this dough is so high, it's going to stick unless your hands are wet. Remember to stretch it near its limits. You can already see that the gluten is forming and much stronger. Cover and let rest for another 20 minutes. After the second round of 20 minutes is up, do the final scoop and pull. I don't actually think this is the name of this method, but this is what I'm calling it. And as you can see now, the gluten is definitely strengthening and being formed. Liberally lubricate a large bowl or container where the dough will have space to expand as it ferments. Don't be shy and rub the olive oil to make sure that there are no dry spots. Pour your focaccia dough into the container. It may seem extra, but this dough scraper is very handy and we're glad to have it. Cover your focaccia so it doesn't dry out and place it in the fridge for up to three days. Is three days really necessary? And the short answer is yes. One day is just too short of a time to develop that fermented flavor. Five days is gets a little funky. So that's why we opt for three days. Finally, after three days of, uh, well, yeah, doing whatever I have to do in life while the bread develops deeper and more complex flavors, we can transfer it to a large sheet pan. Liberally lubricate the sheet pan with olive oil and rub it in. This will add another line of insurance to reduce its sticking when done. 
Pull back the lid to reveal the sleeping gassy baby. It's so beautiful. Using your dough scraper gently, I repeat gently, transfer it to the sheet pan. We want to try and preserve as many of those air bubbles as possible. With wet hands, massage it out to the edges. The faster you pull, the more tension is created and the more it will resist. So be nice, patient, and know that your efforts will be worth it. It's not going to work on the first try because the dough is stubborn, but let it rest covered for 10 minutes and will relax again and allow itself to be manipulated. After 10 minutes, finish stretching the dough out with wet hands. Once you've worked out the dough, cover and let it sit at room temperature for two to three hours. It may seem like a lot of work, but it really isn't. And with your waiting time, you can get other things done like exercising or sharing cocktails. All right, preheat your oven to 250C or 485F or basically as hot as you can get your oven. Set a timer for 25 minutes and get your herbal blend ready while it preheats. I recommend fresh rosemary, thyme, and sage, although in this video, I only used rosemary. Nothing fancy here, just try to dice it as finely as possible. After the three hours of waiting and the oven up to temperature, uncover your focaccia dough to see how it has risen and created more air bubbles. Dimple your dough as you see here, which adds a little something to the presentation and space for the olive oil to pool. Drizzle olive oil on top, sprinkle your freshly chopped herbs of choice and large flaky sea salt. Before it even goes in, it looks fantastic. Place the focaccia on the center rack of the oven and let it bake for 25 minutes. Every oven is different, so keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn. After 25 minutes, this is what our focaccia looks like. And maybe five more minutes would have been okay too. Place on a wire rack to cool for 10 minutes. If you try to cut this now, you'll shred it because it's too delicate. In the meantime, just look over your finished project and how awesome it looks. All the bubbles and golden brown colors, the speckles of salt and rosemary throughout. And although you can't smell this, let me tell you, it's amazing. Take a look at that golden exterior and airy, super soft interior. This is a comforting flavor bomb on its own, but you can use it to make sandwiches or top it with tomato sauce and cheese and you have kind of a pan pizza, which we would highly recommend if you've got a big party and a large group of people coming over your house. And that's focaccia. Dream it, learn it, do it.